Question number 10. Simplify this following expression. Uh, this uses the idea of the roots. Um, and so the law of indices that's important here is the nth root of a to the n, say, can be written as a to the n over m. Remember the root, which is m in this case, goes underneath. Roots go underneath the ground. So using this law of indices, the first thing to do is rewrite these root expressions in terms of uh, as a power using that law of indices. So the first thing to do, oh and again by the way there's a question carrying on from this to have a go at at the end. So what I would do is just rewrite this as a cubed b to the half c to the minus a half multiplied by a b to the third all over. So how would I rewrite the square root of a cubed? So I have to remember that if there is no uh, number in front of the root, it means the square root, so that's a 2. So this becomes a to the 3 over 2. And the square root of b, b to the half, and c. So now I look at the top. The first expression I'd leave as it is for now. So a cubed b to the half c to the minus a half. But this second term on the top, I have to multiply each of the terms inside the bracket by a third. So the power of a, so it's one times a third is a third. And for b, one times a third is a third. Oops, b to the third over a to the 3 over 2, b e to the half, and c. Now, collect together, like, uh, multiply out using laws of indices on the top. I've got two terms involving a, so add to the powers, 3 plus a third. It's an interesting one, so... I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't write this as three and a third. I'd write it as a whole, as a top heavy fraction. Three whole ones is nine thirds, plus another third is ten thirds. So that becomes a to the ten over three. It's not normal to write mixed numbers as indices. Could write it as a decimal in an engineering situation, but let's stick to fractions for now. This next one, b, I've got a half plus a third, so following the same sort of arguments we talked about in previous questions, a half plus a third, I'd have to have a common denominator, which is a sixth. So a half is three sixths plus a third, which is two sixths, gives me five sixths. And then c, just the only one term involving c on the top, so that stays as c to the minus a half, over a to the three over two, to the half c. Now I subtract powers for division, so a ten thirds minus one and a half or three halves. Again, I'd have to use fractions in here, so let's just do this as an aside. Ten over three minus three over two. Could do it on a calculator, but the common denominator is six. Twenty over six minus. 9 over 6. 20 minus 9 is 11. So this becomes 11 over 6 times b. 5 6 take away a half. So a half is 3 6. So 5 6 take away 3 6 is 2 6. 2 6 cancels down to a third. And then the last one, c. Remember that on the bottom, the power of c is 1. So minus a half minus one is minus three halves, or minus, yeah, minus three halves. So that would be the final answer. Note, if you look at the solution, that the reason why we leave this as a top-heavy fraction for the first term is so we can rewrite it back in root form. So this is the sixth root of a to the 11 times the cube root of b times 
times one over, because minus means the inverse, one over the square root of c cubed, which I could write as the sixth root of a to the 11 times the q root of b divided by the square root of c cubed. <coughs> That's not an easy question, so if you're getting these right, you're doing very well. But thinking about that solution, here's another one over on the next slide that you could have a go at, again with the answer that follows. So have a look at this one here. So this involves roots, so I'm going to have to convert these into power form. Notes have also got that all to the power 3, so I'm going to have to use that relevant law of indices there. And then I've got to divide by terms involving roots and negative powers. So have a go at that and see how you get on. The solution follows. So here's the answer. Rewriting in power form. Here and here and so on in power form. Then multiplying each of the powers by 3 on the top, 2 thirds times 3, 3 is cancel, leaving just x squared, half times 3 is 3 halves, 3 halves times 3 is 9 halves. And then dividing by that and working out the solution, you get this, and you could rewrite it like this. Again, each, either of those is correct. So well done if you got that right.